and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I'm going to be taking you on an adventure with me. I'm going to flip three pieces of furniture as well as show you what we're doing for construction in a formal living room that we are turning into a bedroom. You can hear my son in the background. But this room was kind of like a man cave before. We had a little theater set up going on in here and my husband and I currently have three kids and we want to have one more to finish off our family. So we wanted to add another bedroom to this house. My girls love to share rooms. So this room is going to be a shared room for them. But first I'm going to show you how I flipped those three pieces of furniture. So stay tuned to the end to see how this project is coming out. I also want to say thank you guys so much because a lot of you reached out to Dixie Bell after my last video where I said that I would be honored to be sponsored by Dixie Bell. And they actually emailed me pretty promptly after that and asked me if I would like to showcase their transfers on another video. So I just received mine in the mail. I ordered four different sets of transfers. So I'm going to be putting these on some projects pretty soon. And then if you guys remember my hoard video, I showed you a dresser and told you I was going to paint it with a pearl pink. Well, I found this lace transfer that I thought would go really well with that. It's kind of like a light gray lace color and I am really excited to try that out. So thank you all so much for taking that time out of your life to message Dixie Bell and tell them about me. I'm so blown away by that and that you know good things came of it and now I have all these products to work with and show you guys so that will be coming up soon I don't know which video or what order the videos will be in because my life's pretty chaotic right now but it'll be coming up soon so thank you guys so much here is the first table that I'm gonna be doing I've had this one sitting forever waiting to be done and I'm finally gonna to get to do it this one I got kind of recently, a friend of mine thrifted and found it and dropped it off to me. And then this last one I had in my home and I ruined it by putting a plant on top of it without covering it first. This table's got a bit of wobble to it and I'm going to drill the top into the legs to make it a little stronger. I'm using some real skinny 1 and 5 8 inch screws and I'm going to pre-drill those holes. I just need to pick out a drill bit that is about the same size as the width of the screw and I'm going to pre-drill those holes. This front leg right here had a nail in the front of it that somebody had put in there to try and strengthen the table in the past and it made it hard to pre-drill the hole because it was hitting the nail and then when I put the screw in it wouldn't fully countersink into the leg it just wasn't gripping it was very weird and I decided I was going to take that nail out to make sure that that's not why I was having issues with that screw countersinking in there but even after I took the nail out it still wouldn't countersink and since I had already pre-drilled the hole and then screwed in a screw it just wasn't grabbing anything anymore so I went and grabbed a fatter screw and that worked a little better but it still wouldn't countersink down in there so I did the best I could. Now I'm just going to tighten up everything else that's on this table, put in another screw here in the back. I want to make sure that there's no wobble to this table anymore and I tighten the factory screws here underneath although those aren't grabbing much at this point. I pulled this one apart last night when I was prepping for today and this is the one that my friend picked up and dropped off on my porch. She spent $4.99 on it at Goodwill. The top is got some splits going on and needs to be sanded. And then this part was really wobbly. And I thought it was just these screws at first, but then somebody had shoved a piece of paper in there to try and get rid of the wobble. And that obviously did not work. So I'm going to glue it back on. And it has these guide nails in it. I don't know why, but Hopefully that will help. Put a lot of glue in there. The glue that I'm using is a super glue from a company called Starbond and way back in the day when I was a wee little YouTube channel they reached out to me to test out their products on my channel and I actually fell in love with their products. I love their super glues. It is a super glue not like a wood glue so you have to use it for things that are not 
going to get extremely heavy usage, but they have this really cool spray accelerator thing that you can use where you spray it on your project before you use the super glue and then it makes it like instantly dry, which saves me a lot of time. So here's that accelerator that I was talking about and I have a discount code for you guys, which is desert DIY 15 if you want to try out this super glue. And I'm using the medium slash thick super glue right now and it's good for um, if you're doing like a vertical surface so that way it doesn't drip too much. But I'm going to show you in regular time how I use this just so you can get an idea of the, the quickness of its drying time. I put a, a lot on there so the thicker you put it on the longer it takes to dry but if you're using a very thin amount and you spray that accelerator on there it'll freeze instantly as soon as you attach it to whatever you're attaching it to. So you have to make sure you're lining it up correctly. But since I put it on kind of thick for this application to make sure I filled in any gaps, I had a little bit of time to move it around and make sure that I was putting it in the exact right spot. I just want to tell you guys more about this glue since I haven't really talked about it that much. And I really do like it. I'll put the link to it down below in the description box just in case you're interested. Once that is set, I'm going to go back outside and start prepping those other pieces for paint. This first table was very warped on the top and there's really no fixing that. This, The wood is not that thick, so I mean you could go over it with a planer, I guess, but I would just be worried that you're going to end up breaking something else on the piece. And when you have like trash to treasure pieces like this, you, you have to take it for what it is and appreciate it for what's left of it. So I'm just going to make it look pretty and usable again instead of trying to make it perfect. And the same goes for this other one. There were splits in the top and it's not going to look perfect. There was a little chunk of the top also missing. So you just have to appreciate it for what's left of it. And I just sanded this little area flat. Right when I came out, a hawk just grabbed a dove right out of the sky. There's feathers flying everywhere right now. Oof. Well, anyways, <laughs> I'm going to be using my Dixie Bell mud to fill in the screw areas. This one, I just could not get it to countersink. I don't know why. It was just a little bit weird. I'm going to slather it on so that I can blend that later. This whole top is so wavy and distorted that it'll be easy to hide that imperfection there. If anything, I could always go for a textured finish on the whole. Maybe I should go for a textured finish on the top. I don't know. Let's just worry about getting these filled in first. An important hint that, or hack or some, whatever you want to call it that I want to give you guys about doing wood filler in general is that you should always apply thicker than you think you'll need because it does shrink as it dries. In my last video, you guys gave me a ton of advice for how you guys finish your big piles of furniture and how you try not to become overwhelmed by it. And it was also really cool to see you all talking to each other and giving advice to one another in the comment section of that video. And I will have that video linked down below for you if you haven't seen it yet. But I needed that like huge amount of encouragement from you guys and I got tons of it. I can't believe how sweet all of you are. But that helped me today to get these three projects done and don't mind my weird hair right now. I got my hair cut again yesterday and she butchered my bangs. <laughs> I didn't realize it because, you know, the mirror is like six feet away from you. So from far away, it looks fine. But up close, it is like so choppy and I don't know. I had to, I already cut some of it because there was like pieces that were hanging down here. It was just really bad. Anyways, I used your guys' advice on how to get through when you don't feel like finishing something. So I'm going to use some of those things that you guys said today. And I hope you enjoy the makeovers I'm doing. The girl I'm making over these pieces for wanted a, how did she put it, like a plant princess cottagey look. Never heard of that before, and I love it. I think that's such a cute description of a style. So I'm going to go mostly white on her pieces, and then another one of these tables is meant for a different person, and they wanted like a cherry, dark cherry, or red mahogany with black.
So like I was saying, they're each going to get their own flavor, their own <laughs> style here. This first one, I'm going to go with an antique white milk paint. I got that milk paint from one of my viewers who sent me a care package and I thought that was the sweetest thing ever. She sent me a few things in this care package. I'll actually show it to you guys in just a minute. But I have never tried milk paint before and I was really excited to try it. And this piece was already chippy so I thought if it chips, you know, it'll kind of go with the theme here. <laughs> I sanded all the flat parts with my orbital sander and I'm going to hand sand the areas that have curves so that way I don't sand away the shape that this table has. One thing that this table has left, one thing that's still going for it, is its beautiful curvy carved legs. So I want to make sure that those still stand out and keep their shape and their integrity. And you can do that by hand sanding in those areas instead of using an electric sander. Although I've heard that the surf prep can sand areas like this without hurting it. I've never tried surf prep, although maybe I will sometime soon. I don't know. Those They're a little bit pricey, so I might have to save up or who knows. I, I don't know if I'll ever get to. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hand sand. And I feel like that's a very budget-friendly and something that you guys can do sort of thing. No matter how much money you make, you can afford a little piece of sandpaper and hand sand it. And then I just use a microfiber cloth to take all the dust off before I start painting this that for this day I decided to paint inside and it was so hot out I couldn't stand it anymore <laughs> but here's what was inside that package I had that um, general finishes milk paint that I'm going to use she also sent me some knobs and some more milk paint uh, I'm not familiar with this brand but I'm excited to try it and she also sent me a, a packet of Tylenol which I thought was hilarious <laughs> And the last thing that was in there was that she gave me a gift card to Joann's. So I went to Joann's and bought a few things and wanted to put that in the video so that she could see what I got and also so that you guys can get an idea of some stuff I'm going to be using in videos coming up. I got this like grain sack or tack stripe or ticking stripe. What is, <laughs> what is that called? I think it's called ticking stripe. And then I got some wood tint which is a wood stain. I'm hoping it doesn't smell. This one opened up in the bag, just my look, but it didn't spill too much. I don't have any greens really right now, so I got a few green chalk paints. And then I got this really beautiful burgundy color chalk paint. I'm excited to try it again. You guys really liked the project I did in the past that was a burgundy color, so I just wanted to do something else in that color. And then I got some more wood, different color wood tints, I guess. It's not really a stain, it's a tint. It might be like a watered down paint that you can use as a stain. I will let you know how I like those when I use them in the future. And then I got this more moss brown green color. And I'm going to be using both of these greens today on the um, two of the side tables. So stand by for that. I also got some leather strap and I'm going to try my hand at making leather drawer pulls myself and see if that is more cost effective than buying them. I love how they look. I also got some command strips to help me with organizing in my craft area as well as staging. And then I got this fabric to use for a chair that's going to go with a desk and chair set in the future. I don't know when that one will be done. <laughs> but that's what I got at Joann's. And then I also got this um, stippling paintbrush that you can use to do stencils with. So I wanted to try that out instead of using a foam one like I would normally do. And then I also got some one inch foam and some quilt batting to do for my upholstery projects. I can always use that stuff. But let's get back to the project. I'm going to paint it in this antique white color. Let me give you my review here on the, the General Finishes Antique White Milk Paint. I love it. This paint went on like butter. It was so smooth. I didn't have any crackling or chipping or anything like that like milk paint is famous for. I didn't make sure to get off every shiny surface so I'm kind of a little bit confused about why there wasn't any chippiness that happened here with the milk paint but either way I love how it turned out. The, you don't have to use a clear coat on the um, this brand of milk paint which I thought was really cool. I read that on the, the directions on the back and just the color of it was perfect and there was something about the luster it had I guess or I don't know it wasn't very shiny 
it wasn't too flat it was like perfectly smooth and soft to the touch when I was done the only downside to it was that it is a very thin paint so you have to do a lot of coats especially when you're going from dark wood to white like I'm doing I had to do like four and a half coats so when I say a half coat, that's just me saying I had to touch up some areas afterwards, but it did take me four good coats of paint on this. And you know me by now, I always start my pieces upside down, and then I flip them right side up. So that's what I did on this piece, and I made sure that when I do paint by hand like this, I when I'm doing the horizontal like flat surfaces like this, I put it on thicker since it won't drip and that helps to not have to do more coats later on. I just give it more time to dry. That's just something that I do personally. So if you don't want to do that, that's cool. But it, it helps me in the long run have to do less coats, at least on those flat surfaces that won't get drips. And the brush I'm using is a Zebra brand brush and it's a square brush with an angle on it. And I liked it a lot for all these little areas and angles and things like that. Now I'm going to wait for that one to dry, and while that's drying, I'm going to start on the next one. That was some of the advice you guys gave me in my last video. I'm using the Annie Sloan white chalk paint on this one just to try out something different again. This can I got from the same woman who brought over this table to me. She has a lot of surplus paints that she doesn't use anymore, and this can had rust all around the inside, and the rust started crumbling inside to the paint. And once that happens and you paint with rust in your paint, it will stain and the stains will come through your paint, kind of like when you paint a piece of wood and the stain comes through afterwards, except this time it was because of the rust. So I ended up having to get rid of that paint after this project and I used spray paint after this coat of the paint because I didn't want to have any more staining coming through. And I'll show you how I solved the problem of these stains. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably already know. <laughs> My son kept coming in and out and in and out while I was painting this. He's such a hands-on kid. He loves to experiment and use tools and just anything he can get his hands on and do himself. He adores stuff like that. And so I can never turn him down. It's a way he's learning and it's something you can tell that he loves. I try not to let him get into the paint, obviously, because I don't want my project to get ruined. But there's nothing wrong with letting your kids be involved in the process of fixing up furniture and a lot of times it's more fun to them than playing with toys and you would never think of this being an activity kids would like to do but if they show interest then let them try it let them get into it it might be something later on that they know how to do and if they were in a bind and needed to find a way to make money they'd have this skill so don't be afraid to teach your kid these skills so that way they have that going on into adulthood. Here's those stains I was talking about. That's from the rust, and I'm gonna just use some spray shellac on the areas where those stains were coming through, and let that dry for about an hour. And then once that's all dry, you can go back over it with whatever paint you're finishing the piece off with. And for me on this piece, my finishing paint color was going to be a flat, or a matte white and I use spray paint since I was already outside spraying anyways so you'll see I'm gonna use a matte white to go over everything that I already painted just to get this project done more quickly I could have gone back inside and painted it with that uh, same milk paint again but I just I didn't want to end up having to do a bunch more coats since the milk paint took a lot more coats to get an even finish so when in doubt use rust-oleum two times coverage spray paint this stuff is amazing and that's what I did on the top no stains came through this piece is pine and pine is less likely to be bleeding the stain through although it does happen sometimes but this time it didn't thankfully and I just went ahead and covered the whole thing all at once and got that part done now it's time for me to add a stencil to the top. So I was telling you guys I got that stencil brush, I got those paints, and then I got these paints from Dixie Belle from a long time ago, and then that brush. And I'm, so I'm going to mix all these colors into this stencil, and I wanted to show you guys too that when you have a stencil, you don't have to do the same color on the entire stencil. So I'm going to take those different colors that I just showed you and place them in different parts of the stencil. 
you can kind of see what the stencil is going to be but since it's a white background and a clear stencil it's really hard to see but it's a floral pattern and it'll be a cool reveal <laughs> at the end I guess since you can't really tell what it is right now but I just used a couple different shades of green that I had just bought from Joann's and then I used a pearl pink which I'm going to be using on that dresser in the future I haven't started it yet and then I use a garnet pearlish color that is from Dixie Belle and it's more of a dark ambery red color and you'll see that last on here but that was what I used for the flowers so here's that pearl pink and I just stippled it all in there with that brush the brush was really really coarse and I feel like next time I'll use a finer feeling softer brush instead of such a coarse one but it did a good job for now and I you know you have to try something in order to find out if you like it or not so I had to test this out I'll probably use it again it's just I wouldn't use it on things that need to be more accurate so here's the reveal of the stencil isn't that pretty it's like peonies and flowers and different things I figured that would go with the garden theme that that girl was wanting and I did the same thing on that first table I just didn't film that part since it's pretty much the exact same thing and then I went over it with a clear coat although I did not film that either for this tabletop I'm going with black I was using wise owl in black because that was the black paint that I had on hand and I'm using that same square angled brush because this is a square shape that I'm going to be doing and I don't like wasting painters tape or taking time to tape things off so I'm just going to do it by hand and I want to show you in real time how slowly I move when I'm trying to get a perfect line without tape. So this is me doing it right now in front of you without taping anything off and I got an almost perfect line and it would have probably been more perfect than doing painter's tape because it always bleeds through. So that that is why I really do it. Plus, you know me, I'm always trying to save time. <laughs> time is money and I don't have a lot of time anyways and I spend most of my time with my kids so <laughs> less time for furniture. Now I'm going to do a clear coat over the top and putting a clear coat over black paint is a little bit tricky actually so you would think that since it's a dark color that it would be more forgiving um, a paint stroke like the paintbrush lines, stroke lines, whatever you want to call it <laughs> but it's not. It actually shows up more than it would on a lighter piece and so when you're doing that you just want to make sure you're using a very fine synthetic brush or a sponge if possible I didn't want to do a sponge in this square shape so I, I just didn't want it to like bunch up in the corners there or just be too thick so that's what I did here so I'm gonna use this restore finish for the rest of this piece here and it has stain mixed into it so I am going to wear my respirator for this and <laughs> It's just now starting to get so hot that it's very uncomfortable to wear my respirator, so there's that. <laughs> I'm going to be getting really sweaty up in here. But this stuff works really well, and it'll cover in a lot of these light spots that have popped up. To apply it, I am just using shop towels, which are paper towels used for like automotive things. They are very lint free so when I use them on this it's not going to leave a bunch of lint behind which I love and it's easy you just throw them out when you're done. Since I'm using something that is toxic I'm not exactly going to want to wash a rag in the washing machine and reuse it with this stain on it. So that is why I choose disposable things for stuff like this. But Restore Finish is magical. It creates like a glass looking beautiful finish especially when the wood is in good shape it just needs to fill in little areas that are missing stain i was using the dark walnut color on this and i went over the paint with it as well so that the paint had the same sheen as everything else with that new restore finish oil all over there look at the shine it has now now you can't even tell that there's any brush strokes on that black and look at how beautifully like brand new the rest of the wood looks I think she's really going to like this piece and it's going to match well with the stuff that she already has. Same kind of wood tones and everything. And here is table number one with the stencil on there since you didn't get to see me paint that on. I love this color and I'm definitely going to be using this white again and again. It's beautiful. This stencil actually turned out better than the round table stencil. I think I just kind of perfected my craft. 
<laughs> on this one more than in the first one but the first one still turned out really beautiful I think that putting them together they're not exactly the same but they're similar and I think that's going to be a cool look for that cottagey plant princess style that she was trying to go for where it's not too matchy matchy but it still goes together as a set and you can do this without it being in this style. If you have two mixed match tables, you can paint them in the same color or the same tones and then help them become a set together. But stay tuned because I'm about to show you that room renovation that I was talking about. Here is a before of that room before you saw that framing behind me in that clip in the beginning of this video. This was a formal living room and it had double doors on the side I went in and then we added a door and did electrical in here. Um, this house didn't have ceiling lights before and it was, we needed to move switches and things like that so we did that and then we're going to add closets in on this side right here as well as the other side right here so that way it can be a legal bedroom with up with a closet and since there's two of them we're going to put in two closets and then this area here is going to be their bunk bed area we're going to have two full-size beds and this is the other side that i just showed you now closed in so we are putting drywall back in here this is my dining room so looking before you'd be looking into that room but now it's blocked off with drywall and then this is the other side of that drywall and the two closets have been framed in we hired somebody to come do this part because my husband and I both hate doing drywall and framing so <laughs> we hired out this part we probably could have looked it up and figured out how to do it ourselves but it was just it was so worth it to have somebody come and do it and do it right and have it be done and we can do the finishing touches so what we're going to be doing in this room is putting in shiplap on this area here is the shiplap that we're using. We got it from Lowe's for a little over $7 a piece. They call it tongue and groove board, but if you flip it around and put it on backwards, it looks exactly like shiplap. So we're gonna put that on the outsides of the closet. For the insides of the closet, I'm going to be going with a cedar tongue and groove board. So I've used this before on a project where I turned an old military footlocker into a cedar line trunk. And I'm gonna show you right now what this product looks like in the box so if you want to try this you'll know what to look for so here is what it says on the box cedar safe natural closet liner it smells so good <laughs> it smells like you're like out in the forest right now i love it but this is supposed to help keep bugs away see moths i'm hoping it'll help keep all bugs away because here in the desert we have really creepy crawlers and i'm really sick of them <laughs> I've tried everything I've sprayed uh, we go scorpion hunting at night with a black light and we've gone I think four times and we've gotten 16 scorpions just in those four times just in our front and backyard actually mostly in the backyard <laughs> but it's because they're here eating other critters and I'm hoping to keep them all out of my house so closets are dark small spaces where I feel like bugs would be hiding and this will help me feel better about that for my girls and it'll smell really good and hopefully to make their stuff smell really good too. We're going to be starting on this wall here in between the two closets. So there's the two closets. Because it has this electrical that's exposed here and with kids, we want to get this dangerous stuff put away as soon as possible. So we're going to cover this side first. And the boards we're using are eight feet. This is a little less than five. This is a little less than three. So we're going to cut this board to fit and then attach this board and do the same thing. Cut this one to fit and then attach this board so that we're using the full eight feet of each board as we're going. And we're going to have to cut out those outlets to fit. We're going to have a, a desk here built in. So I wanted to have lots of outlets for my kids because we homeschool and we use computers a whole lot. Just like that? Low. Yeah, and then one down low. Down here? Yeah. I didn't film a time lapse of him doing this whole thing because I didn't, he hates being on camera and I didn't want him to be constantly thinking about how he's being recorded <laughs> while he was getting this done. So I just let him do his thing and he got quite a bit done and I will show you 
the progress as he's going, like give you updates and things like that. I just didn't want him to feel pressured by having that camera there. <laughs> I've gotten used to it, but he's not used to it yet. He's still working on that. This is how far we got last night before we ran out of shiplap. So my husband's right now going to Lowe's to get more of it. It's like $7 and some change per piece of shiplap, just so you were... Just to let you know in case you're wondering, but I'm going to be painting all the shiplap white. So I'm going to start doing that now before we put the carpet down and everything. And I also um, want to get this started before he gets back. So I'm going to do that. I'm just using the Valspar brand. Uh, and it's a semi-gloss white, like a bright, pure white. I wanted to use semi-gloss because this is a kid's room. And semi-gloss is extremely easy to clean up anything that gets on it. <laughs> And I want to be able to wipe down the walls if I have to. If I were designing an adult room where there would not be children getting their fingerprints and crayons and markers and things on it, then I would probably go with a less shiny sheen, maybe like an eggshell or a flat colored white. But I want to not have to worry about this being difficult to clean up. So this is as far as I've gotten for right now, and this is where I'm going to leave you guys for today on this project. I still have tons and tons and tons of painting to do, and it's gonna take me either two or three coats of this white paint. You can see the wood grain is still coming through it. So that's gonna be a while <laughs> before I'm done with that. But I have to find a stopping point for this video so that I can get it up to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed my three side table makeovers today and I hope that you also enjoyed getting to see the behind the scenes on this room makeover for my girls and I can't wait to show you guys how much we've gotten done next weekend when I upload my next video. See you then. Bye!